Calgary. And Manitoba and Alberta have the early lead the Scotties Tournament of Hearts, Jennifer Jones and Val Sweeting, both 6-0, Ontario and Northern Ontario, both 3-3. Three three. You're listening to the home of Leafs Nation, Sportsnet 590, the fan. Prime time sports. Bob McCallum, Steve Moore, Al Macker, Moore, Brady and Walker on Sportsnet 590, the fan. And the Panthers get it back in all the line. Hipstead twisting and turning. Hipstead into the corner. Jokin and gets it back to the point to Campbell. Campbell shot as it perfectly scores! Most likely to the rescue. <laughs> it's 723. It is off, honestly. <laughs> Get off. Get out. It's Brady Walker on your Wednesday, the worst 20 game stretch uh, in the Leafs history. It does make you a little giddy. Uh, and then and then I hear you say the Leafs will play old Carolina Friday or Saturday Friday. Well, what's the game? And well it's a big mod five yeah, game. Sorry. Yeah. And and then the oh the Winnipeg Jets get to they play in Washington Thursday, by the way, Winnipeg. And then they get to sit here Friday waiting, wait. But so did the Oilers a couple weeks ago. People gotta remember that. They love to make a big deal when a team's here on Friday night and settling in, having a lovely steak dinner, maybe seeing friends and family. Yeah, but, there's, but if you're here an extra day, there's a chance that there's, there's establishments to get free. You can't get into that much trouble in this city. You act like it's... Uh, you act like it's... Uh, I believe the Oilers did before the 5-1 shellacking that we saw at the Well, how the Raptors back, by the way? This is excruciating. It's, it's, it's really bad. No offense to, no offense to Gord Stelling, our next guest, but I, I missed the Raptors. I'm not taken. Uh, Gord Stelling joins us now, uh, pre- and post-game host uh, for uh, Leafs Nation, uh, and and this morning brought to you by Sicily Honda. Uh, you did a great job with Dale Talon yesterday, and I don't know how you did it over the dance music in the background. They, the, the new guy, Alan Cross, is, uh, is cranking it up, isn't he? Uh, you know, sir, I got, I got two feeds in my head now. I can hear you. Okay. Can you Are you there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Now I got one feed. Okay, perfect, perfect. There were two feeds going at once. So anyway. Um, oh, are you on two shows this morning for I some reason? I, just, I, was, uh, I think I heard someone talking basketball on the other one. I heard you guys talking uh, about the hockey. So now it's gone. So I can settle okay. down. Yeah, first of all, Dale Talon. That was, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it, it was neat. Well, it's neat chatting with anybody from an organization that's willing to chat, um, which a lot of other organizations seem to be willing to do. And, you know, he, he goes about it. That, uh, it was a model he learned in Chicago. And now we live in Florida, but you build with young guys. And they've got some uh, solid young guys and talent. Big guys are excited about it. You know, one of them is Jimmy Hayes, who I wrote about last week. It was a yeah. second round pick of the Leafs that he just couldn't uh, uh, couldn't sign for some reason. Brian Burke couldn't and flipped into Chicago. And we flipped to Florida, and, and and our 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 return is Brad Moss, who's a second round pick, who still still seems a bit away. So uh, Florida's kind of shown how you can do it with uh, the younger players. He seems to have lasted longer in the NHL than uh, Christian Hansen or Brayden Irwin, but maybe I'm not paying attention enough. Maybe, I, maybe I'm, I thought those guys were, that's the equivalent of getting a first-round pick. Well, the one, the one guy that did work out of all that was Tyler Bozak. Yes, right? so, so you take, uh, you roll the dice, and a lot of guys will be right. But, you know, see, and this is the thing, guys, uh, where, uh, I, you know, they always talk about how how difficult it is to play in Toronto. This is where I find it, it's so easy, is that you throw Christian Hansen's name out there and the excitement about it for a couple of years, and, you know, people are excited about it. I mean, you know, Brendan Shanahan hired last year, and it's like the coronation of a king. There's a press conference to announce an assistant general manager, which, you know, there wouldn't be a press conference in any, any other city, and, and it's all really warmly and positively received, which is which makes it bizarre how this teardown has excited people, as you guys were discussing in one ear, about the uh, the now that, that like, like let's lose, let's, let's lose to Carolina, and get below. it's just very bizarre. Could this be, uh, Andrew brought this up earlier, and I kind of scoffed, but then I thought maybe there's something to it. He said, is this one of the worst Leafs teams in the last 40 years? And I, how do you think talent-wise, how can they be? they got two guys who were, who were rocking it at the Olympics uh, 12 months ago for Team USA. They've got, they've got depth. But then I thought to myself, well, could this be one of the worst groups you've ever seen, or collective groups in terms of they're the most mentally fragile? I like, like it, like Eeyore, woe is me, sky's falling, everybody's on us, uh, we can't get, you know, it's a hard city to play, and I hear that complaint a lot from the push. Brian Burke enabled that kind of talk when he was here. Could this be one of the worst groups you've ever seen? You know, bingo, guys, you know, Greg and Andrew, that uh, first of all, talent-wise, there's no, that, that's the frustrating part. Like, I, I worked in the organization that followed the organization or covered it, 
and uh, through similar situations like this, and this is easily the most talented group. That, that, so that's the part that's frustrating. Uh, other times, it was understood at the start of the year uh, what you were in for. So absolutely, absolutely, this is a way more talented group, and that's what's from and, and again, Dale Dallas talked about character and leadership. That's what uh, that's what he needed in in uh, Chicago, and that's why David Bowen, for example. And I'm not knocking the Leafs for letting David Bowen go. Don't get me wrong for that kind of money, but you need that kind of element, and, and this is exactly it. it as far as a group goes, there's an incredible amount of uh, flaws that way. But the key thing, guys, is this part of the teardown is you've got to identify what's good here. There's some really good things here, and you've got to figure out the assets that you want to keep and the few that it makes sense to move, um, hopefully at a good cost or at all costs, to get that right sense of no more what was me, no more ER, a little bit more leadership, a little bit more character, no more snub gates, no more that kind of crap, just that element that I think they should have been able to identify years ago or earlier that's missing. George Dillinger against uh, Brady Walker, sports get fun, not a fan, precisely. Uh, right, and you're going to see Ole Oakley play quite a bit probably over the next couple of weeks, and and some other guys as well. Franson already out. Santarelli's already out. Now, some guys you can't move because of money, and we know that. Some guys are going to be summer deals as well. But put yourself in the shoes of, hey, say a Dale Talon, who you talked to last night. Who on this Leafs team is both semi-affordable and a guy that you would pay for? Well, you start with, uh, you know, first of all, he quickly proved the Phil Kessel situation. That's not a knock against Kessel. That's just why I think Kessel won't be a trade deadline deal, and, and neither will for us, in my opinion. It's just a little bit too complicated to work out all those little chip lunches right. with a big contract like that. I, I mean, they all want Morgan Riley, but no one's going to give up Morgan Riley that way. Uh, obviously, Daniel Winnick. You see, that's why I don't think a lot's going to happen, guys, by the trade deadline. I think people are fooled that there's going to be a ton of moves by the Toronto Maple Leafs by the trade deadline, and I, and I really, I really don't see a ton of. Like I don't see Nathan Condry moving. I don't see JVR uh, being injured. You know, he might have been a guy, but you know, he's injured. I, I, I really, to tell you the truth, like the assets that that Dale Talon or anyone would be interested in. Uh, are, are guys that won't be moved. Like, you know, like I said, starting with Morgan Riley and a few guys like that, uh, everyone's hoping they can, that Dave Nonis might do what Wash would cost George McPhee's job and give up a Philip Forsberg. Uh, you know, that uh, out of the excitement or desperation or the fact that your team's not doing well or whatever. But uh, I don't I don't see a lot happening by trade deadline with the Toronto Maple Leafs, which I think is going to disappoint Toronto Maple Leafs fans. I think there'll be more around the free agent trend period. Well, so we, we know Winnick is going somewhere. What about Tyler Bozak? Because there's the one, there's the one name that um, it's not like it, it, it's a contract that's going to be a huge detriment to whatever team brings him on. Well, I don't know. You know, it's you know, it's got three years left after that, and you know, his uninspiring play. I mean, I, I think he's uh, he might be king of the Eeyores. I mean, Phil Castle's taking it, taking the hit. But I, I think that's where the line's gone south. I really do. So uh, that would be, um, hopefully, this is where if Nona's can get creative and, and take back a comparable contract to someone who's underperforming elsewhere, that would be great. Because you're going to have to take money back. But I think that's the one. I, th I think you're right about that. You know, like, here's the strange thing. You, you're talking about the word showcasing. And, you know, the, all the Montreal guys were there last night, for example, and I realized last night, as you, you know, you guys looked, I tried to identify this is the most talented team not making the playoffs. I've 